All right, so if you're watching this on YouTube, this is what you're you're not going to hear in the podcast. So this is kind of the first time we're going to try this. So uh, with me to my left, it might be your right. I'm not sure how it's going to show up after the recording process. Um, is Jonathan Carroll. We're going to start the actual recording of this episode. We're going to do a countdown. Are you ready? I am. All right. We're going to start in five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of ADHD Rewired. My guest today is Jonathan Carroll. Jonathan is an ADHD coach. He received his BA in communications from DePaul University in Chicago and his MA in learning disabilities with additional studies in social emotional disorders from Northeastern Illinois University in Chicago. Jonathan founded and manages Carroll Education Group IEP experts, and the business of coaching. Jonathan lives in the Chicagoland area with his wife and two children. And if you couldn't tell by the fact that he runs three businesses, he is also a member of this wonderful tribe. Jonathan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Eric. I really appreciate it. Thank you. So what we were going to talk about today is... um, when we were talking last week, we were talking about different ideas of things we can talk about. We talked about uh, emotion management. We talked about how to deal with things in the environment. Then we talked about dating. So I thought that the idea of ADHD goes in a date could be a really sort of fun and, and I think important topic to talk about. So where do you want to get started with that? Well, I, I think it's important, uh, you know, any relationship that you have in any, um, you know, whether it's friendship, whether it's romantic, whether it's with family, you know, anything like that, that you put yourself in every situation to be the best that you can be. So, uh, you know, as, as a person with ADHD that you so eloquently put it with the 900 things that I do in my life, uh, you know, I sat there and I, and I really study myself and I study myself in situations like, you know, if I go out to dinner with my wife, you know, how do I, how do I respond in that way? If I go out to dinner with my kids, if I'm doing a podcast with you, if I'm, you know, playing hockey with my buddies, you know, I mean, whatever, in every situation, you know, being appropriate socially is a challenge. And so I'm like, okay, so what are some things I might be able to do to make myself more desirable in a social situation? Uh, for example, uh, I go out to dinner with my wife. I sit with my back to the door. And at first she's like, you're always taking the comfortable seat. <laughs> Explain to her. I'm like, listen, like, if you want me to remotely hear what you're saying, if you want me to continually make eye contact with you, if you want me to do all these things, then you're going to have to understand that sometimes uh, I have to do these kinds of things to be more engaged with you. And so, you know, that, that way we're, we are, that you are my center of attention, not that you're not, but you know, again, if I'm sitting facing the entrance to a restaurant, I'm, my mind's going to wander. I mean, you know, it's just the way it is. So, you know, these are things that I work on, just, just subtle things that, that I'll do. Uh, I'll give you another example, Eric. You know, I think one, <clears throat> excuse me, I was with a- Be, a Before you give uh, an, an example, so this is for the YouTubers because the people on the podcast won't hear this part. So I'm hearing, so this is the t- kind of attention I pay to, to detail with audio. So I'm hearing your audio kind of go up and down and I'm wondering if it's a setting on Zoom. If I'm gonna troubleshoot with you really quickly because since we're only a few minutes in. Um, go to the bottom left corner where you see your microphone icon. Yes. One, make sure that the microphone you want is selected is actually selected. Yes. Okay. Um, then go to audio options. Okay. And then click test computer audio. Okay. Okay. And is automatically adjust the microphone settings. Is that selected or unselected? It's a selected. Unselect that and we are going to be good to go. Okay. Sorry All right. So uh, I hope the YouTubers appreciate and enjoy this behind the scenes, uh, the the attention to detail that we put into crafting a a good podcast. Now, the the other trick is how do I remember what we were just talking about? You're about to give an example. Um, So so I gave the example of dinner with my wife. Before you start giving the example, let me hit hit record. Let me unpause the record. Otherwise, no one's going to hear it, except for the YouTubers. (laughs) (laughs) If this video ever gets posted. All right. So... So yeah, give us, give us some examples of, of what you were talking about. 
Well, the, you know, the example of dinner with well, I, the example of the dinner with, with my wife or anybody, you know, I, I mean, I don't want to use her intimate, like, you know, with my friends or if I'm with someone, you know, that, that again, in a social situation or in any situation that I really have to have my focus on that person, you know, I really like to sit with my back, you know, to the door or to an entranceway or to a patio. I mean, the challenge during the summer sometimes is like, okay, so you got the door covered, but then they got some people sitting on the patio. Or, you know, if you're in a place that's a restaurant, a bar, you might have your back to the door, but then all of a sudden there's the bar that you're facing. So it, it's with, with, the, with the 10 TVs that are all in, in your line of sight. Right, exactly. And me being a bit of a sports fan, that's kind of a distraction. We go like, oh, let me get to score this game and that game. And so there's, all, there's always kinds of something going on. So it's always situating yourself in a position to be successful. You know, um, <clears throat> ideally, I like sitting in a high booth when that way I'm facing that person <clears throat> because I think it's important that you're at least in that same vicinity. But again, it's, it's, it's like putting yourself in the least distracted environment. Mm-hmm. Now, here's another example. Um, I was with a good friend of mine, well, actually a colleague of mine, and, 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 and he wanted to meet me at Starbucks. And that was like pulling teeth for me because it was so loud in there and there was so much going on that I, I had to like literally feel like I was tying myself to the chair and tied my head on a sw- like I would not, and, and, and it was very, very hard. And I was exhausted after that meeting. I mean, mm-hmm. it, was, it was a lot of, you know, it was a lot of wear and tear on, on, on me. And I think for some of our our, our, our parents of kids with ADHD, that was something we missed too. It's like, you know, we say, kids, can't you just pay attention or can't you just sit still? That it's like, it's like thank oh. you. I hadn't actually thought of that. <laughs> right. So I think that that's really, you know, part of it. And so like, you know, again, in, in, in any situation that really requires focus, that's what's really kind of important. So um, I know for myself, when, when I go to a restaurant, you know, it's, sometimes we hear ADHD, these jokes about ADHD, it's like, oh, shiny or, you know, shiny object syndrome. And it's, you know, and I think that when you have ADHD, I think you can, you can make those jokes. I don't like when other people make those jokes who don't have ADHD because they don't really get it. But in, as to a certain degree, there is absolutely an element to the shiny really gets our attention. Because you were talking about, you know, um, turning away from the TVs uh, if you're at a bar and there's sports because you really like sports. Now, I'm not a big sports fan, but if there's big TVs on, my, I just look at it like just because it's big and shiny. Like I didn't care about it. Like, I have zero interest in it, and it's still grabbing my attention. So I think it's just a really important thing to, to sort of have that self-knowledge about yourself. To say, okay, in this given environment, like this is what's going to help me be successful. And this is what's going to help, or this is what's going to contribute to it really being a struggle. Right, exactly. And that's uh, something I work on with clients. I mean, I think is that whole, like, hey, you know what, you need to be a student of yourself. Like if you and I ever met for lunch and, you know, we're really not, you know, you're probably about a good driver away from me. So it's not like you're that far being in the Chicago area. You know, if we ever met for lunch, I'd be like, okay, let's probably not go to a restaurant that we know has a lot of big TVs. Mm-hmm. We should probably meet somewhere that's a little safer for both of us. And again, that's part of being a student of yourself, like knowing like if I go to, let's say a Buffalo Wild Wings on a Saturday afternoon when there's college football, chances are I'm going to be looking at the 17 TVs they have with the different games on. Wait, wait a minute, Jonathan. So you, you're, you're, you have three businesses and you have a family. How the hell do you go to a Buffalo Wild Wings on a Saturday or a Friday afternoon? I don't. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh. Cause I was going to say like, maybe you can teach me something. Cause like, I, I don't know how to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope my wife's not listening. But I, uh, no, I, I mean, I, I you know, it, 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 in series, like, you know, again, if you meet people for, for, you know, lunches and stuff like that, it's like, okay, let's find the, the, the safest place for us to go mm-hmm. again. And then here's the other thing too, is, and I don't know how you are, Eric, but I can, I can use my, again, I use myself as a measuring stick. You know, some foods sit differently than other foods. Mm-hmm. I'm very much, I, I'm very hypersensitive to a lot of things to temperature, to light, to sound, to a lot of these things. I mean, this is just how I am. And chances are, again, I like spicy food, but if I'm going on a, on a business lunch, I probably should tone it down a notch. Now, again, if I, you know, okay, now see, you're going to give me some, the business for tonight. I'm actually taking my kids to Buffalo Wild Wings. It's, I think it's four ninety nine kids meal. That's why I thought of it. So and my wife's working. So I'm like, you know what? I'm like four ninety nine kids meal is a great deal. It might even be less than that. I don't know, but we, they like it there. But my, my point is that, you know, when I'm with them, okay, I might eat something a little spicier because I'm like, I'm with my kids. I'm in a safer place, et cetera, et cetera. Now I'm meeting someone for a very important lunch. I'm saying maybe I'm going to tone it down a little bit, not get the such spicy food because 
again, it's like, you know, if I'm sitting there sweating or, you know, or, or not in a good place, it really throws them off. And, and are, are you a fan of Curb Your Enthusiasm? Do you ever watch the show? I, I, ha- I, I used to watch it. I do like it. Yes. There's an episode where, where the main character, Larry David, who was who the creator of Seinfeld, is out to dinner with a woman, and he says, he decides to eat very spicy food. I won't give the reason why, because this is a PG show, but he decides to eat spicy. Oh, it's not necessarily PG shows. We're, we're all adults here. Okay, well, then, I, okay, with the guy in detail, it, it, the thing, the statement is, if you eat spicier food, apparently it makes, it, it, it helps you be a better performer in bed of some sort or the other. Okay. All right, so he goes to this Mexican restaurant. He orders this exceptionally spicy dish. He's like wiping his head with napkins. But he's, you know, he's follically challenged like I am. And he's wiping his head with the napkins. <laughs> like challenged. Napkin on his head. And like, you know, he's drinking tons of water. And, 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 and it almost gets to a point where he becomes such a, such a disaster that the woman wants nothing to do with him. So it's like, you know, if you're in a business situation and you're, you're sweating profusely because, you know, you had to get the hot wings instead of the medium wings. Probably that's a problem or even on a date. I mean, again, you know, listen, my wife's married to me, so she's kind of pot committed and stuck with me. But like, you know, I'm sure when she goes to dinner, she's like, I don't want my husband to look like a total idiot over here with the <laughs> napkin pieces, and you know, drinking water and like, you know, so I think that there's you know, a validity to how you present yourself. I mean, I joke, but I've gone out to dinner with a lot of people, you know, I, I, I've gone to lunch with some clients of mine, you know, and I see mannerisms of theirs. And I'm like, God, I, I, I hope I don't come across that way. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be with that per- person mm. that has no ability to regulate him or herself in a restaurant. So I, I, I really, the topic of dating, you know, it's like you should almost, and this sounds really kind of corny, but you should almost be dating yourself. Like, Hey, do I want to be around me when I do this? Or do I want to be around me when I do that? Cause like, you know, there's times where it's like, no, you're kind of acting like a jerk or dude, you probably need to tone it down on the you know, whatever. So well, you, you, you shared with me last week um, that and this is part of where, where this discussion and idea for this topic came from was that um, you, you snapped at someone because the music was too loud at a restaurant. Is that? Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting story. I was, well, I was, the person I snapped at was kind of, well, <laughs> the story goes like this. You know, my wife, my wife just made you uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I think you trust me. I, I, uh, <laughs> there's a lot of things that can make me uncomfortable. This has been very chill, but you, if you can keep trying, if you want, maybe you'll get there. Uh, so my wife works uh, downtown in downtown Chicago. She's an attorney and you know, she, she had some people, she had the, her law firm is on the East coast. Okay. Long story short. Okay. So she had people in town. She says, why don't you come meet us for happy hour? You know, my boss in town, he wants to have dinner with you, blah, blah, blah. You know, and, and, and it was great. So, Got downtown Chicago and, and, and traveling in high traffic times for me is exceptionally stressful. Like, oh, it's I, awful. I'm pissed because I even took the train downtown because I'm like, I, I just can't drive. And so I get downtown, you know, it's, it's raining a little bit. It, you know, the weather's not great. And I, and I walk over to the bar. Let's say the bar was a 10 minute walk from the train station. And I walk in there and it was like that scene. I don't remember the old Bose commercials when they put the music on and the guy's hair flew yes. back. That's exactly what it felt like to me. Uh, so it was like a sensory assault. Oh yeah, that great term, sensory stuff, exactly. And I'm like, and, and I go in and somebody asked me a question, I kind of snapped on him. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, I, I, got, I was able to get myself back to a good place and I was able to regulate, my, you know, cause it was like, I walked in, boom, right away. There's like, okay, oh, man. I've been needs a minute. And so, you know, I got myself a good place. And I said, okay, look, I said, I, you know, look, I was transparent with him. I'm like, you know, this, sometimes when it's really noisy in a place, I get a little bit overwhelmed. I said, but you know, now I'm, I'm chill. And then it leads into the job that I have. Well, I work with people with ADHD and they're like, oh my God, you do. I have a friend who's got ADHD. It's like, you know, yes, we all do. So it's like, <laughs> it's like, so, you know, it, but it's like, once you explain that to people, it really becomes like, wow, you actually, you know, it's like, wow, I can't believe you're being that honest. Well, I think that's how you have to be a student of yourself. Or again, you go back to the rest like that. You know, you go to a bar, it's noisy, it's happy hour. There's a band playing there. It's going to be loud. And, you know, you can't say, well, I refuse to go to those places because then you won't have any relationships with people. But at the same time as you have to adjust. So my, my strategy would be the next time is I need to get there a little earlier. Maybe go to the bathroom first, get in there for about 10 minutes, get myself situated, then go meet my wife. So kind of like you're a, a new fish in a fish tank where you are still in the bag and you go into the fish tank it, while it's still in the bag, get yourself acclimated before you release from your, the bag. You just stole my analogy, dude. That's what I use all really? the time. <laughs> yeah, all the time. I throw that. I, that's true. I remember like, you know, we come home with the, the clown loach or the guppy or whatever we got, put the bag in the tank, you leave it there for about a half hour, then you cut it open. 
Because again, their bloods. Yeah, so that's exactly the that's the perfect analogy. So I, I do have a question, just my own curiosity. I have found for myself, I very much relate to to what you were just saying. Have you found for yourself, as being a student of yourself, that it's gotten worse as you've gotten older? Worse from a standpoint of how I analyze myself, or no? Worse is in the the things that that um, are hard from sort of that that sensory perspective of like you know because i i don't really remember you know in my where is high school college um going to a noisy place to socialize being so like problematic for me so it, so i wonder is it just that i'm aware more aware of that as a challenge or is it that i'm just you know becoming frumpy in my my old age of almost 36 uh, you know, that's a, that's, a great, that's a great question you have um, because it's, it's interesting because I almost feel like with my ADHD for a long time, I was ashamed of it. Mm. So I really tried to like, you know, I mean, I, I use this term and this is not derogatory, but I almost had in the closet ADHD where I was sure, like, oh, sure. I really don't want people to know that I, I have this, that I deal with this, that this is the kind of person that I am. Mm -hmm. And so um, I really covered it up. And, you know, would hide it. So it'd be like, hey, I'm more go with the flow. When Isn't in reality, life outside of the closet, so much more enjoyable. <laughs> it is. And it's like, I, you know, I'd be the fish flopping around. Here's a fish analogy. I'd be flopping around the floor like, wow, this is great. I have to, you know, it, it, how I am. And now I'm like, you know, now that I, I, I really, and I think I came to this journey, which led me to this career, you know, because I'm kind of like, you know, I'm like, this is who I am. And it's like, you know, either you're going to love me or you're going to hate me, but this is how I'm wired. Mm -hmm. Um, fortunately, again, I found a partner, uh, that gets me, uh, which is great because thank was, goodness for our partners who understand this. Cause it's, this is, this, it's well, amazing. this is time, this is time two. time one did not understand as much. So, okay. So that's a story. And I want to yes. ask you about that. Oh, good. <laughs> so it's like, I, I, uh, you know, so it's like you, you get to that point and again, it, it comes from a variety of things. How, how does one, how does one get there? You know, it comes from that sort of thing. And it's like, I think the way that I really found out about my ADHD was, uh, you know, I was a teacher for a, a while and, you know, I always felt like a square peg in a round hole as a teacher. And I always thought like, Oh, it's this, it's that, it's this, it's that. And then one day I woke up, it's not this or that it's you. And it's, it's, it's your constant stubborn approach to things that leads you, and I don't want to say stubborn, but I mean, for the lack of a better term, I guess we'll call it stubborn, that leads me to these things where I'm at. And, and I say that not because, you know, again, it, it's not that I, I, I wasn't, you know, I thought I was a good teacher and I, and I still am in touch with a lot of my students. I think what it really is, is just that I wasn't, I was a good teacher, I wasn't a good educator because a lot of those things. And so my journey kind of led me to what I do now. So I'm like, look, I love working with people. I, I, I have an understanding of what I do, but it took me a while to get there. And I think one of them was waking up one day saying, look, you have ADHD. You can't hide it. It's like, it's something that you're going to have the rest of your life. So you might as well embrace it, understand it and, and, and really be transparent about it. And Hey, I'll tell people like, Hey, listen, I got ADHD. You know, you're, you've lost me about 10 minutes into this conversation. So I've been staring at your collar. That's not the right way. <laughs> or that smudge on your glasses is really kind of throwing me off. So I'm like, you, you lost me, man. And then people are like, wow, you really lost about this. I said, yeah. I said, why wouldn't I be? I, I, I that's who I am. <laughs> right. It really, it really wakes you up. People are like, oh, your honesty kind of sucks. I'm like, well, <laughs> It's the way it is. I don't know the truth. So I hope that wasn't a long answer to a short question, but I, uh, you know, it's, it's really, I think I love what I do. I am passionate about what I do. You know, like just, you know, I uh, really find that I'd rather educate people to what I have and really educate, you know, I mean, and I do this professionally, but just people so they know, Hey, this is a little bit more than not doing your homework or a little bit more than looking like pig pen from the peanuts comics. I mean, this is, this is a 24 hour a day, seven day a week, 365 day a year thing. And why, why, what in the morning I wake up and have a thought that I can't get out of my head. So let me ask you about, um, you know, more about relationships. So, um, in your, your, so your current marriage is your second marriage. The, the first one, did you know that you had ADHD then? Well, I've known since I was six. Okay. So 42. You, and was that part of the, the like 
did you share with your your then wife uh, that you know kind of going into the relationship? I probably wasn't as transparent with her in the beginning. Mm -hmm. I think when I started having some, you know, problems in my marriage, problems, you know, in, in, in other things, I said, I need to go talk to somebody about this. Mm -hmm. and, and I was a little more open. I think she knew that I had ADHD. Um, this was a while ago. So sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to uh, recall. But so I went and saw a couple, you know, professionals. Um, and it was really helpful in that way to kind of get, you know, sort of back on understanding what I had. Um, you know, it's an interesting question you ask. And again, I'm going to give you a long answer. I, I don't, my marriage, first marriage didn't fail from, from one issue. It probably failed from several. And I think that that's, you know, looking at and self and, and being reflective is, did traits from my ADHD creep in and affect my marriage? Absolutely. Was that the reason why I was divorced? No, we just weren't compatible people. I mean, she wasn't a bad person. I'm not a bad person. It just didn't work out. So no. I, I like to look at, at failure as you know, you know, these are the, the things that can teach us the most. Um, they are probably the, the most instructive teachers if we're paying attention to our failures in that way. Mm -hmm. So what were, the, what were some of the things that you learned from, from that? I mean, I think I, I would say I have two marriages. One I learned from, one I live with. And, you know, what I, what I learned was, you know, I think with, with being a stubborn person as well as a person with ADHD, you know, I would fight about every issue that we'd have. Like everything would become a fight. Everything. Like, what are we eating? What are we doing here? What do I do? And, and I think in this marriage, I'm like, look, there's certain things that are going to be absolutes that I'm going to stand to go stick to my guns on. But my, but my wife is my partner. And if she's my partner, then that I, there has to be an equal distribution of everything that we do. And I would like to think that I've really grown in that way where I really have a good understanding of my wife and my wife's needs and my wife in, in, has that as well. And, you know, we have some challenges, you know, I mean, I, I, quite honestly, my wife is, is an attorney and she works a lot and she does a lot of traveling and she does a lot of things where she, like tonight, she's going out to dinner with some, some colleagues. I mean, this is what she does. And, do I love it? No. I mean, I'd rather spend time with my wife and I think she'd rather spend time with me, or at least I hope so. <laughs> so I, I speak from at least one side. No, but I mean, she's indicated to me that she doesn't like doing this, but she has to. And I said, okay, well, you know, I have the kids and I will go out to dinner. Like I said, Buffalo Wild Wings, maybe I'll have spicier wings, but uh, yeah, we'll go out to dinner tonight. You know, well, <clears throat> you're really looking forward to these wings, aren't you? I am. I have. It's been a while. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like, you know, but I, I you know, I, I, I get it. And like, you know, and, and I have some work to do tonight. I'm meeting with some, some clients like we were talking and so it's like you know i have things to do so it's like you know it's, it, it works out but you know that I, it's an understanding that we have and just like tomorrow night i have something i have to do and she's going to be home and she's going to take on the role that i'm taking on tonight it's 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 a very effective relationship but it took time and effort and understanding and getting to know each other and working through those things where it's like I understand that you have to do this for work. You understand that I have to do this for work. So we have to make this, no pun intended, work. Or <laughs> what, 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 was the, what was the work that you guys did to make this work? Is the, I mean, making relationships work takes work. It takes right. ongoing work. It's not, you know, working on relationships is not an event or something that you do in, in a series of events. It's ongoing work. Can you highlight or even share any specific stories about some of the things that you guys did that has made, uh, you know, your guys busy lives work, um, including in the ways that you've been able to maintain, um, you know, going out on, on dates. Um, you know, I think, well, first and foremost, I think is communication. You know, I, I think you have to be transparent again, even in every situation, like, listen, you know, I mean, and my wife was traveling a lot, a year and a half ago. And, and, and I expressed her that, you know, it was putting a lot of stress on the household it was putting a lot of stress on me because, you know, I mean, I, I, I run a business too. Um, but I also understood, and, and she then would explain to me, this is how she builds her business. And these are things that she has to do. And I said, okay, I said, well, let's find a happy medium where maybe, you know, you're a little more like, I, I don't know how you are, Eric, but I, I'm very much of an anal planner. Like I have to know pretty much what I'm doing every minute of every day for the week. And sometimes when I was like, oh, hey, guess what? I'm going to San Francisco next Tuesday. I'm like, ah, you know, you, you, you can't do that to me because I'm like almost like, 
you know, it, it, I, I plan out in my head what I have to do, but we've been working on her, you know, we have a shared calendar, so we put stuff down. So it's, it's little things like that where it's like, mm-hmm. okay, you go to San Francisco next Tuesday. Okay. I know I got to pick up the kids. I know I got to make dinner. I, you know, I know what I have to do. Um, and that's really one of the things that, that we've really worked on. Again, you know, she's, my wife's more of a fly by the seat of her pants kind of person. And again, I'm more of like a, okay, it's one o'clock. I have to do this. It's one thirty, I have to do this. And, 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 I, and I think that that's really part of it is like each one of you gets each other. You know, if you, um, you know, and I'll, and I'll go back to my first marriage. That's the kind of stuff we didn't really have. Mm-hmm. It's more of like, well, you know what, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And you're going to do what you're going to do. Cause we didn't have kids. So that was also part of it. You know, mm-hmm. so, okay. And sometimes we'll meet in the middle. This time it's like, what are we trying to do together to build us? Now, you said that, you know, uh, you know the, the key is communication. And you know, I think you could pick up any relationship book and that's, that's what it'll say. The key is communication. So, so yes, right. But my question, and I think that maybe a question for, for some of the listeners is, well, how? When you have such busy lives, when, you know, one, one of the challenges that my, my wife and I have is that, um, you know, she's, she's rearing to go in the morning. That's when she's at her best. That is not when I am at my best, you know? And so when, when I'm want to review the day, um, you know, after 8 PM, we sort of have a, a, a rule. Um, and that's the, it's fluff only meaning like no serious topics can be brought up after 8 PM. It's just, it, it doesn't turn out well, even though my brain wants so badly to tackle those topics at that time. So it's these, these kind of trade-offs. So the, the challenge that, that, um, that we've had and we've come up with some solutions for it is when we're sort of out of sync in some ways with where our, our brains are at and our schedules are at, um, knowing that communication over issues is really important. When you have kids, I mean, does, has anybody with a child ever finished a conversation? I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, so it's, what do you do and what do you recommend also to for your clients who are struggling to have these conversations when there's, two, you know, Two people who are very busy managing kids, jobs, and all these kinds of things, along with their ADHD. Well, I want to I wanted to kind of follow up on something a little bit, Eric, because I think this is kind of an, an important thing. And I brought this up for my first marriage, and 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 you know, and again, I'm I guess I'm very transparent about these things. Is whenever relationships don't work, it's not a singular issue. Uh, and, and I think that that's one of the that's biggest points that people make. <laughs> it's like you know, if, if you know, my first marriage broke down for. A, a variety of reasons. Was there a straw that broke the camel's back? Yes. That part I will not get into, but you know, there was, what is it? What is it? I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, you, you know, we, we can play choose your own adventure and I'll put the page numbers on that. They can pick. I mean, there, you know, it was, it, there was not one issue that caused. I almost want to go down that rabbit hole, but, but I won't. <laughs> no, I, uh, I would have to put the kibosh on that or, or you know, <laughs> am I getting warmer? No, no temperature whatsoever. But I, I, I think that, you know, part of this in, in, in all seriousness is like, you know, it's like there's not a singular issue. So it's always more than one thing that happens in any relationship that breaks down. And people with ADHD like to latch onto that one thing. Well, my, this didn't work because of this. No, it didn't work because I mean, if you go through the whole catalog of things that you've done in those situations, there, there's a lot of things that come up. Um, with my current marriage, I, I think that I'm with somebody who's, you know, understands how I'm wired and gets that when I put my hand up, if I'm in the middle of something like this knows that, okay, he needs his space for a minute because he's in, in the zone on something or understands that, you know, there's things that are important to me, just like there's things that are important to her. In my first marriage, I think that we, I, I had lost sight of that. And I'm not trying to make this therapy about my first marriage. Believe me, I, I, I'm well over it, but it, it, it's like, it's that kind of stuff. So it's like, okay, so honey, I know on Sundays are football Sundays in the Carroll household. And if you saw my setup, Eric, you'd really think it's the ADHD King setup. I have three TVs and in, in oh three games. I know it's, we don't mess around. Um, and so that's, that's my setup, but that's, what's important to me. And that's something that, you know, that that's my stress relief is football. I mean, that, that's what helps me get through my week. Um, I know for my wife, like what's important to her, like, you know, she likes to go and get her nails done. She likes to go and, and you know, she likes to do things to make her, you know, hey, this is for both of us. The hotter she looks, the happier I am. So it's like, you know, I, I encourage her to do those things. But, oh, I mean, there's things that are important to her. Like she likes to cook. She likes to do things. I'm like, that's great. You know, these are what's, that's what's important to you. So I know when she has these things, I, I, I 
we 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 we've come to that ha- that compromise, and that's what's important to you because I I have friends in marriages. I mean, again, I don't want to make that, but I have friends that are married. And I see things that they do sometimes. I'm like, I, I just don't get it. Like, if you don't want to be around each other, then why are you married? Like, I love spending time with my wife. Like, you know, I mean, she's like, when she's not gonna be home tonight, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna miss her. I mean, it's, it, it's really, I'm gonna miss her. I just love spending time with her. How, how long have you guys been married? We've been married now for going on. Not, well, actually, wait. <laughs> We're gonna have our tenth anniversary this this next upcoming July. Do you need to double check that? I'm good. <laughs> you know. I think my, my biggest regret in my marriage is um, it really, and it's something I can still do now, is to get the date of my, my wedding um, on the inside of my, my wedding band so I don't forget the, <laughs> when we actually got married and how long right. we were married for. But the, the funny thing is that both my wife and I, and my wife does not have ADHD, we're always like, wait, how long, is it, how long has it been? It's like, how, how old are we? <laughs> it's, not, it's not being pretentious about this thing. It's like, it's just a date. Like being able to remember a date has really, like, in my opinion, does not a sign of how well you, much you love somebody. It's, yeah, I mean, that's the thing too. Is like, I mean, for Valentine's, for example, and this is not because I'm cheap or because I'm insensitive. I don't need to celebrate my wife's love. I love her every day. And it's like, I, I was, and that's, and that's really the way I look at it. It's like, you know, she, she is my soulmate. She's my partner in life. She's the person in this world that I trust the most. The person that I love the most, you know, besides my kids, I mean, it's a different kind of love for my kids. Sure. You know, it's, and, and, and it's, and it's really gotten to that point Eric, through, you know, just understanding through uh, communication, through getting to, you know, getting each other. Like, you know, I get my wife when she's in that moment of what she needs to do, what she needs to do. I get away from her. It's the, which one do you like better? This one or this one? I always take the second choice because that's usually the one she's thinking. So one day she's like, how can we always guess which one I want? I said, because it's always the second choice, babe. <laughs> or, or the other one, like the other day we had a funny one. She goes, uh, what do you think of these shoes on me? And I looked at her, I said, honey, I said, you really don't want to know what I think. You're just at, talking out loud to me. So I'm like, pick the shoes you want and stop putting me in the middle of this. And she goes, good, good answer, honey. Good answer. That's <laughs> brilliant, by the way. Yes. That is yeah, really, so that's, really good that's, advice. That's, that's, I mean, it's like, you know, it's like pick and choose your best. Okay. So, but then what becomes a battle? Do, do, do I, do I get concerned because she likes to go and buy the kids clothes at Target? No, I mean that, that there are kids, that's what you should do. So that those are things that we don't, I mean, I'm trying to think what, what are our disagreements over? Probably food. I think she probably wishes I would eat a little more responsibly. Like I said, I'm not going where I'm going tonight, but I think that that's something that, that she would like. I mean, she wants me to live longer. Um, and that's really it. Like, I mean, we pretty much don't have any real fundamental issues because we both, you know, are on the same page. There's nothing that I do that bothers her. Well, I'm sure there's things that I do that bother her. I, I, I probably need to clean the house more, which she's expressed to me, and, and, I, and I try. Um, but really and truly, it's like, you know, I think that, you know, the do, things... Do you guys have a cleaning service? We do. Okay. We do. We have some... I look at, it, at cleaning... When I was a kid and now never my... You know, I would hear my, my parents struggle about money. Uh, yeah, they had a cleaning service. And I never quite got it. I was like, well, that doesn't make sense to me. Right. You know, now as an adult, I, I don't look at it as a luxury. Like, I look at like, if I don't have a cleaning service, and we, we have a cleaning service that comes once a month, right? Mm-hmm. That ensures that at least once a month, the toilets get cleaned, the right. floors get cleaned and vacuumed. You know, it's because otherwise, if I do it, I will hyper focus, and now I'm on, on the floorboards, the floorboards with like the toothbrush and like the the detail uh, right. uh, vacuum, and it's like now I just spent my one day off doing right. that. When I always have, we, my wife and I have come up with a saying: "What's your time worth?" There's a certain point where it's like, you know, that's something that we live by. It's what's your time worth? You know, again, it's like you know, there's, you know, look, I mean, you you don't want to be out being frivolous all the time, but you know when it comes to certain things, it's like, you know what, my, my wife, I guess as an attorney, you know, and again, I'm in private practice and I know what I charge per session and I know what she charges an hour for what she does. And I'm like, you know what, what's your time worth? If, 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 you know, if it's, if it's worth, you know, <clears throat> it's like the people that wait in line for an hour to save $20 on a meal. I'm like, you know, again, I don't want to spend anybody else's money. Listen, if, if that's a lot of money, that's fine. For me, it's like, okay, that's not worth it. Now would I wait in line to save $500 an hour? You're darn right. I would. I mean, that's, yeah. you know, that's $500 an hour. Yeah, exactly. That's the, that's the kind of conversations you have. So for me with my wife, it's really more about like the, okay, what is important in this moment? If getting a cleaning service in to, to do those things 
makes my a happy wife happy life. That's 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 the key to all this. And I know, I mean, I know there's women listeners to this. The, the happy wife, happy life. That's 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 what I've lived by. And, and, and I think there needs to be a more uh, like um, uh, marriage gender neutral equivalent expression. But I'm trying to think of what rhymes with spouse. Or happy spouse, happy mouse. I don't know. <laughs> Partner. Um, yeah. It's, and so that's that's really I mean, that, you know to kind of that's really the way it is, and it's it's like you know I I found with my with. A lot. Well, let me bring this to some of my clients who I think are not in the healthiest of relationships. The number one thing that I hear is that my wife doesn't understand me. Mm-hmm. My wife doesn't get me. And I, and I think it's like, well, or my husband doesn't understand me or my husband doesn't get me. And I think in reality, it's more of, again, it's back to my, the singular issue. It's not a singular issue. Mm-hmm. It might be that your wife doesn't hear you because she's tuned you out a long time ago because she's sick of the excuses. Or that your husband has tuned you out a long time ago because he's sick of something else that did happen here and happened there. Um, I had one client in particular, again, obviously, you know, we won't mention names because that's not what I do. But I had a client in particular who, who was just every interpersonal relationship he had didn't work. And he would blame this and he'd blame that and he'd blame this and he'd blame that. And finally, one day I looked at him and said, you know, maybe instead of blaming them, you need to look at you. That's why I do nothing wrong. I said, all right. I said, I think maybe it's time for coaching to end and you to go home and just be in love with yourself. I can be very blunt with clients. And mm-hmm. I think, he said, well, what do you mean by that? I said, well, I said, if you don't see any fault in what you do and you think it's everybody else's fault, then you're perfect and don't need to come here anymore. He didn't like that very much. <laughs> I don't really respond. Well, what have I been paying you all this money for? Well, I'm like, well, that's, that's your problem. Cause you know, again, it's like, you're not listening to you know, if you don't want to hear what somebody, you know, and you've learned this, Eric, in your, in your practice, if you don't want to hear what, what the professional is telling you, you know, sooner or later, it's like you're wasting your time and your money. Mm-hmm. But if you hear what the professional is telling you and, and, and try to implement it, we're doing it to try to help you get better. You know, and sometimes the truth, it can be the most painful medicine, but it's yeah. very helpful. I had a therapist tell me when I was, you know, when I was going through my divorce stuff, he's looking at me like, he's like, Jonathan, you're heat-seeking missile man. He's like, I've never seen anybody who locks on something and just focuses his just being into it. He's like, if you're going to continue to do that, you're going to find the same results all the time. I'm like, wow, I never thought of it that way. Well, mm. truth hurts. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we go to break, I wanted to ask you about um, how do you schedule dates with, with your wife? Hey, the kids are asleep. Let's eat. No. <laughs> um, you know, we really There's probably some, some truth to that. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I think that, you know, our, my kid, yes. And I, you know, I, and it's fine. I was talking to someone about this, you know, you know I, I mean, I, I just love my kids. Like, I mean, I, I really feel I have the two greatest kids in the world. I know everybody says it, but I'm like, they're great. And it's you know, the best part for me about my kids is the feedback I get from other people. Like, Oh my God, your kids are awesome. It's like, you know, and it's not the, that's got to feel good. I mean, it really, and, 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 and it means a lot to me because I think that that's the type of environment we've created in our house where it's like, we have a real loving environment in our house and we really try to be a loving family and spend quality time together. So how do we set up date night? Well, you know, I, I, I through a variety of ways, you know, my wife calls me the mayor of our town because she says, I seem to know everybody. So, um, our school has aftercare for our kids. So I've gotten to know, you know, all the high school kids that work there. And can you remember their names? I can. After a while. How? After oh a while. Not, not right away. Not right away. Hold on. I don't do it right away. But like, you know, I mean, the ones that babysit for me, I remember. So, you know, I mean, I, I'll go around. I'll be like, hey, do you want to babysit? And they're like, yeah, we love to babysit. I'm like, okay. So I have a whole, that kind of sounds awful, stable of babysitters. <laughs> That, that, no, I mean, it's really, and some people come to me like, hey, do you think you can help us get a sitter? I'm like, oh, call this girl. You know, she's great. Or well, this guy, he's great. So um, we planned a date night last Friday. And it was great. We had a wonderful time. So it can be done. Who, who, who does more of the planning for the date night? You or, or your wife? You do. You do. Well, okay. I'm, I'm, so, I'm, so everyone for audio, um, he just waved his hand, which does not make for the best of audio, but he's, he raised his hand saying that I do. So, all right, so you plan, you plan the date night. Yes, I'm sorry. I see, I see you on, on the visual. I'm like, oh, yeah, he gets the, they, uh, here's, the here's my narcissist, uh, narcissistic ADHD. Oh, they know I'm waving. But, uh, so it's like, 
I, uh, so I sit there with my, with my wife and, you know, and then I'll say like, Hey, let's go to dinner Friday. She's like, great. She went to dinner last Friday, had a nice dinner. Um, and, uh, see, but here's, here's a step in the, in, in the world of Jonathan. So I had a coupon for the restaurant we went to. It's a restaurant we like, they mailed us one. And I go to pay. I put the coupon in there and the waiter comes back like, Oh, it's not good Friday or Saturday nights. And normally Jonathan would be very, like, you know, <laughs> fiscally responsible guy. I said, I'm not going to let it bother me. I said, I'm enjoying my time with my wife. I'm going to fixate. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on my time with my wife and enjoy myself and not worry about this, this or the, you know, the coupon. That sounds like a big win for you. Oh, it's a huge win for me. It was very hard because, again, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, I, 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 you know, now I'm going to get on my soapbox again. But I think that we sit there with our cell phones and it's like, you know, in the world, it's like you go to your kids' sporting events and people are watching through their phones or they go to a concert. They go here. It's like, why don't you watch through your own eyes? Yeah. Why don't you just, instead of sitting there, getting that perfect picture or videotape or whatever, why don't you just see the moment and enjoy the moment? And so one of the things my wife and I do, and this would be a great lead into the break, you're going to love this, is we'll go to dinner. Jonathan, and- are, you, are you taking over the show? You're transitioning, you know, when the break is coming? <laughs> just kidding. Oh, you said it. I'm just following up on it. So we put our cell phones either on the side of the table out of hand's reach or we leave them in the car. Because I'm like, you know, for this next hour, I'm with you. Now, I actually have to keep my phone when we have a sitter because, you know, you never know. I have a daughter with severe allergies, so I always have to be available, but I'm less available. In other words, it's not like, oh, my phone's sitting in front of me. Here it goes, the, you know, it's, again, I look down at where my phone is, of course, on the video, which no one can see. And so it's like, you know, it's like, oh, my phone's vibrating or my phone's ringing. I'm like, oh my God, there's a text from my buddy. Or it's like, oh my God. It's like, no, it's like, you know what? I don't need to know anything else. What's on your mind, honey? Not you, honey, my wife, honey. So the next, so the next two nice, baby. <laughs> so that That's really what I would recommend is like, you know, get the devices out of your hands and spend time with the person. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's something that, that I certainly work on. Um, it's, I know like when I go out with my wife and uh, I, I have that like pain in my hand that like I want to reach for the phone and, and I have to be very cognizant of it. It's not easy to do. I mean, it's, you know, it's like once you realize how often you reach for the phone when you didn't even mean to reach for your phone, you know, it's like you got to start doing something about that. And so uh, I'll often actually turn, just turn my ringer off or I use a, a – um, there's a, a cool app. Uh, are you on iPhone or Android? I, I have an iPhone. Okay. So there's a cool iPhone app uh, called Auto Silent, which you, it reads your calendar and it will turn your ringer on and off based on your calendar. But we'll also do it using a geofence. So if let's say you show up at a restaurant, you can create a geofence around that restaurant where it will turn – it will be silent until you leave that area. Well, that's awesome. That sounds very cool. See, I actually have the annoyingness of wearing one of these. Do you? So the, the, the Apple Watch? I, Apple Watch. Sorry. Visual. Apple Watch. <laughs> on my wrist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay um yeah no, i i've, I've thought uh, I've, I've, I've given thought to it but it's i, I don't know I, I think that i have enough digital distractions i actually have um i'm gonna reach for it and then describe it because i'm gonna show it and tell oh, wow okay so here it's called the kitchen safe timer it's like this big sort of like it looks like you would put like pasta or something in it but right. the, the lid it has a clock as you can see on it and so you, awesome. you turn this dial and when you push the dial it will you will lock the top so you cannot open the container and so what i have done uh with this um is when i'm sort of struggling to to not play the my time wasting games um i'll put it in here sometimes because then it's like one, once it's in there it's like until the timer goes off there's it's in there that's awesome it's pretty cool, Mr. Tivers. It's very, very cool. No, I like that. That's a great idea. Now it's like, you know, but for ADHD, we have to build that toolbox. If it's not, this is, and this is another thing too, is like you know, in, in the ideal world, well, the ideal world exists probably within a two foot box around us at all times. So really there's nothing left outside of that. So, you know, in the ideal world, it'd be great. I carry this big plastic thing to a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with the hands. I have my hands out. Like, you know, you go out and you, and you bring it with you, and it's it's a wonderful idea, but you can't do that. So then, where's the safe zone? Well, if the safe zone might be on the left end of the table, away from you, mm-hmm. or what we'll do sometimes is I get her phone, she gets my phone. 
Mm. That way it's like, you know, I don't really care. You know, <laughs> she's getting, she's getting emails and texts about work. And if you think it, it, and if you think, you know, that there's the law is boring, wait till you read texts and emails about the law. It, it's really uplifting stuff. So it's, it's like, you know, so it's like, you know, we have our stuff in front of us and then that, or, you know, from the opposite person. So at least that way, again, we're creating that. So those, there's little things you can do. It's just that, you know, again, there's, if I go back to the phone thing, you know, I'm on, I'm on this call with you right now, you know, the, or you know, we're doing this podcast and this is great and this is really helpful and I'm enjoying doing this. There's nothing I need on my phone right now that that's, that's, you know, urgent that I have to go look at it like, Ooh, you know, so-and-so made a trade or something. Who cares? It's like, you know, this is what's important right now. And it's, um, do you do travel a lot, Eric? Do you fly a lot? No, um, I probably maybe twice a year. Uh, I'll so, be seeing yeah. you. I'll see you on a plane in about a month at Chad. But yeah, uh, that's right. That's you know, right. It's almost refreshing to be on a plane because you know what? Those are th- the time you're on that. Now, again, you can get Wi Fi and be a real cheater. But for the most part, that time, nobody can bother you. I get a lot of really good reflecting and stuff done on a plane. So I'm like, you know what? No one can bother me. This is my time. Yeah. So let's do this. Let's, uh, let's take a quick break. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to invite you to sit in the hot seat, and we're going to give you some coaching. Awesome. We'll be right back. All right, so this is for the YouTubers. Um, so, because I don't want to have to edit this later, so I'm going to throw my promo stuff right in here, right now. So, um, if you are looking for an intensive coaching and accountability program, uh, ADHD Rewired does the ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group. Um, we offer it about four times a year. Our next session will be starting in January. It's uh, 10 weeks of coaching, three days a week. You can learn more about this coaching group by going to Coaching Rewired. I like the looking systems where I don't have to actually go back and create extra work for myself. You, can, you know, it's, it's, it's a great thing to do. And the, the YouTubers are getting this stuff too. The, the how I think. Um, anyways, how you doing? You doing good? Yeah, I'm good. So um, are we still on YouTube right now? Yep. And, and the YouTubers just saw that I just spilled actually water on myself. Look at that. That's awesome. awesome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm going to take a second to talk about me, just so that way if anybody has any questions, you can learn more about my work at uh, ADHDguru.com. Um, I also do a podcast on, on iTunes, uh, ADHD Guru, or I have a YouTube page myself, ADHD Guru. <laughs> so it's under ADHD Guru, or you can call me at 877-398-2343. I love about giving numbers is that no one's going to remember that. It's like, wait, wait, oh, of oh, course oh, not. So... Um, you know, Jonathan, now, now I have to edit this. I'm totally kidding. All right. So um, we're going to come back in three, two, one. All right. Well, welcome back. So um, at least for this episode, I just want everybody to know before we before Jonathan officially sits in the hot seat is um, – we're going to try to put this episode on YouTube. And so we've been doing some sort of behind the scenes stuff that you're not hearing on the podcast. Um, like things like getting to watch me spill water on myself. Yes, that actually just happened. Um, so all of that will be available on YouTube. We'll link to it on the show notes. But right now what we are going to do is we're going to ask Jonathan to sit in the hot seat because I want to be able to help you with an issue that you're having. So Jonathan, what's up? Hey, man. How's it going? It's going good. He's he clamming up here. What's going on? He's like, oh, no. I feel like I'm being interrogated. This, he's been, that water he spilled on his shirt was really dripped on my head, so I'm being Chinese tortured now. <laughs> is, that, is that like on PC? Or is like the, no, it's, can, that, can that be offensive? I thought it was called the Chinese water torture, wasn't it? When they, is that one of the things they do when they drip oh, water on someone? Oh, I think maybe. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't offensive. Gosh, we're becoming too PC on this show, I guess. But I'm in the hot seat, so I'm going to watch myself. All right. Um, now I'm like, hmm, do we edit this out or not? For YouTube, this is all staying in. Uh, <laughs> all right. How can we help you? What, what, what is one issue that you would like a little bit of, of help in? Um, you know, I, I, I think it's probably uh, – Sometimes, you know, as we just learned there, a good exchange there, sometimes, you know, maybe as funny as I think that I am, um, and I think I'm the funniest guy in the world, just ask me, but uh, maybe sometimes I need to tone it down a little bit 
in certain situations. So when I get too comfortable, sometimes maybe my filter goes down a little bit and I'll say something like, you know, it doesn't seem offensive to me, but it may have offended half of the listening audience. So it's, it's kind of like that self-awareness thing. Mm-hmm. So it'd probably be a really good place to start. Hmm. Okay. So, um, all right. Tell, tell me more um, about where, where, uh, where challenges in this area are occurring for you. Uh, it, it's, it's probably not a, you know, again, back to, I'm using the word singular a lot, but I, I think it's not a singular time. I mean, I think it's just, you know, in certain situations, like, you know, we'll be in a, at, at a party and stuff and, and I'll be talking to someone and sometimes I'll say something like, you know, okay, here's a good example. I was at uh, someone's house. They had us over and, and, and their family over. And as I mentioned before, I'm a big sports fan without getting into details. I was criticizing somebody in the, uh, management office of one of the teams that I like. And the person says to me, says, well, you know, he's a family friend of ours. Ooh. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I held to my guns, but then I thought about it. I'm like, you know, I probably should have said something. I should have pivoted away from it. Mm-hmm. So it's those, I mean, I, I, I don't know if it was an insert foot and mouth moment, but it's probably one of those like geek moments. Sure. And, <laughs> so, and it's, you know, that's, to me, that seems like the type of situation that there's no way you could have known that ahead of time, right? I needed to let it go. Right. So, um, yeah. so it sounds like this is something that, that comes up on a, a more than you would like basis. I think once is too many times, but yes, okay. it's, it's something that I need to sometimes control. Okay. So are there certain situations that you are in where you know this is more likely to happen? Um, I think it's when I'm in public places with groups of people. So it's not necessarily, uh, you know, one-on-one with my wife. Do I have insert foot moments with my wife? Sure. I mean, it's, it's, it's who I am, but you know, she knows me and she gets is it me. Who, is it who you are? Or is it what you do? Oh, well, I mean, it's probably, you know, it's, you look, I, I, I like, to make people laugh. I think it's the feedback that I get sometimes that makes me feel good about, you know, who I am and how I present myself, you know? And, and, and I think as a person with ADHD, um, you know, I think you know, I at least deal with self-esteem issues sometimes where I'm like, you know, I think we, I think so many of us do. Absolutely. And it's like, do I want to be liked? And do I equate being liked to people laughing at me? Do I, you know, it's almost like, you know, the sad clown, like, you know, um, do I want people to see me as this clown, but maybe I'm a little sad on the inside. I, I mean, I'm getting deep on this, but I think it's sure. important to understand that like, you know, when I'm talking to someone, I want to say, holy crap, this dude knows what he's talking about or holy crap, like, this guy's really funny. And in reality, I probably sit back, like, I really hope they don't notice that I'm stressed out about this situation. Cause it, 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 it's really true. It's like, I mean, you know, um, I'm running for, without getting details, I'm running for our local school board. And, um, you know, I mean, I, I've been in education a while. I mean, I think I'm a really qualified candidate for it, but yet I can't convince myself of that. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think so many of us struggle with that, Jonathan. I mean, it's right. It's that imposter syndrome. Right. And this per- people are like, oh my God, you'd be perfect for this. I'm like, are you, are you just telling me this because I'm here? But then I think about like, I have the, you know, I, I, I would think I have good credentials, but then I think like, well, you know, but then they would know I'm this or I would make think I'm that. It's like, instead of just believing in who I am. And, and, and I think that that goes back to the self-esteem thing. So like, why do I say things that I tell people laugh? Or why do I say things that sometimes might come across as like really just obnoxious? And it's probably like, cause I'm like, I want people to be like, God, he's funny. Or, God, he's, you know, he's, he's cool. When in reality, it's like, you know what? I may be that person without all that crap. Sure. Sure. Um, how do you do with being wrong? Oh, well, that's never happened. So can we move on to the next topic? Uh, so this is an area uh, we're working on, huh? No, I, 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 I you know, it, it, it's happened to me the other day. You know, my, my wife and I were, de- you know, it's, uh, you know, family can be my biggest source of stress. <laughs> Excuse me, both for me and for my wife. And we were dealing with something in the family and, and she asked me to do something and I didn't do it. I wasn't reading that she wanted my help with it. And she basically snapped on me. And when, you know, the long story short of it is the next time I saw her, she had to go drop her mom's not well. She had to drop her mom back. Okay. So within that 15 minute camp, when she came home, I, I met her in the driveway and said, I'm really sorry. 
I was insensitive to your needs. Um, and, 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 I, and I was, I mean, I wasn't doing it, you know, as lip service. Um, I really meant it like, you know, I was, I was, I was 150% wrong in what I did and how I handled it. And I, and I, and I think that there's that in, in a lot of situations where it's like, you know what, just admitting you're wrong. It goes so much further and meeting it. Like, that's like, Oh gee, I'm so sorry. <laughs> right. As opposed to, you know, I'm really sorry. Like, I, you know, I, I, I have no excuse. I was wrong. I like the, Oh, it was my ADD acting up. Like, no, right. that doesn't fly. That, that, that's, that's a BS excuse. It's like, yeah, I, no, I, was wrong. So I, I take ownership when I'm wrong. And again, that, that may have been an issue for a while, but now it's like, Hey, you know what? It's like, I'm not perfect. And, I, and so I'm a- what about when, um, you know, like in the situation where you made the comment about the, the family friend who is, you know, the manager of a sports team and um, in that moment, so you were saying you wanted to sort of stick to your, your guns on, on that. Um, what, was there also a part of you that was thinking, oh, I need to backpedal, but I don't really want to backpedal. Like, what was your, your thought process? You know, I, pretty, I have very strong feelings about this person, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, no, I, I probably needed to pivot a little bit and be okay. like, oh, you know, yeah, maybe that's a, you know, they're trying to make a point of why I was wrong. Mm-hmm. I could, you know, probably again, impulsively didn't want to agree with them, but I'm like, oh, wow, I didn't think of it that way. That's a really good point. Or, you know, why I'll, I'll have to rethink this a little bit. Mm-hmm. So it was one of those things where I'm like, you know, maybe I, I again, I wasn't, you know, I always tell people your opinions aren't wrong. How you express them are. Mm-hmm. That's good. And uh, yeah, I have a bunch of them. I'll hand you the toolbox of them. But I think that that's really kind of what I needed to do there was, oh, yeah, you know, maybe, if, uh, you know, wow, he really did or, you know, whatever. It's like, wow, that's really a good point. I didn't think of it that way. So now it's like, you know, we're very close to these people and I'm sure we'll get together with their families again. I'm sure I'm going to become the, the idiot guy that doesn't know how to control his mouth. And I'll be like, you know what? I'm like, you know. Well, what about, you know, we, we talked I think, before about sort of owning it. Um, if you were to have a conversation with him and say, you know, when, when, uh, you know, we were talking about whatever his name is, um, it's like, I, like, I have very strong thoughts and, and, and opinions about him and you're a family, he's a friend of yours and, you know, and, and I don't want that to get, you know, interfered with our relationship. And so, so you don't necessarily need to say, I see your point of view. Um, mm-hmm. But you could also say that I respect your your feelings and opinions because I respect you as a person, you know. So I think it's it's acknowledging that there's also there's always going to be things with people that you'll just sort of agree to disagree, and I think that there's certain um, uh, things. I don't know if you listen to um, uh, the, the Tom Nardone show. Um, him and his wife have a uh, have certain topics that I think he calls it. They, they go in the black box. Like there's just certain topics that are just topics we don't, that are may have already agreed to not talk about because right. like nothing good ever comes out of it. Right. Right. And it sort of works well. Like, they they know the black box is there. It's you know it's it, it's there for safekeeping. But like uh, like opening that up and and letting Pandora's box open up um, mm-hmm. for certain things can lead to a lot of, of, of difficulties. Um, when, now was your wife around when this happened? Um, she was in the other room. So okay. she was talking with the, uh, no, it was, it was, we were watching a uh, sporting event. And so <laughs> the topic came up, but I, I, I think, again, you know, the, in, in, we were having sort of a bit of a, I don't want to call it heated. I mean, it wasn't like we were going to go step outside and throw it out. But, you know, in sports brings out the best and the worst in all of us. And I think it was like one of these things like, well, I liked one thing. This person didn't like what I liked. And then it led to other things that I didn't like. And that led into the thing that I didn't like that he liked. And it led into like, oh, by the way, thanks a lot, jerk, for making fun of our friend. It's like, wow. It's like, okay. So I, I think it's like anything else. Like, you know, my wife wasn't there. Um, <clears throat> my wife, again, you know, really, I, I'm, I'm very blessed. I mean, because I think she sits there in some situations and she's like, this is just minutia, who cares? <laughs> but then sometimes she'll be like, you know, I didn't really like when you did that. And, and it's like, I don't know, you ever watch a show Blackish? Uh, no, I've seen Happy Ish, which is an awesome show. Blackish is on, on ABC. It's uh, about an African American family living sort of, you know, in, it's like, I guess I would call it like the modern Cosby family. Okay. I should say it's like, you know, the show is very, very funny and very creative. And so the dad was, was dealing with his kids misbehavior. So, you know, the, the, the Lawrence Fishburne who plays the grandfather on the show is like, boy, when you used to do that, I used to whoop you and blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and so the, the character goes and, and, and says to his kids, he's like, 
I am so disappointed in you. And his dad's like, whoa. He's like, that's, that's way over the line. So it's like how we express. Sure. And I read that story because like, I know when my wife, like when she says that to me, I'm like, you know, I'm like, wow, that really hurt. <laughs> so, well, Jennifer, let me ask you this. So uh, this is one of the fun things for me when I get to work with, with coaches and, and, and therapists is that I get to ask this question. What would you do if you had a client that was coming to you with the very same issue? What would you tell them? Uh, there's this great coach in Volo and I call her <laughs> Timbers. You should call him. Um, I, I think that I would probably say a couple things. I think the first thing that I would say to, to this person is I would say that, you know, you, you have to understand your audience at all times. And, and, and it's hard for us sometimes because we're so focused on, on, on the now and, and just getting through things. It's like eating our broccoli that we don't focus on chewing it. It's just like another analogy for you. So it's like, I, I, I really like to tell my clients that you have to really focus on, you know, like sometimes, you know, if you're going to say something that you know is probably going to make the room a little uncomfortable, that you have to expect people to be uncomfortable and you can't get upset if people are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. If you take a stance on something that's, you know, again, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, if you take a stance on something that, you know, it's, it, it, that's why they always say that politics is, it should be a non-starter in conversations with people because we all have our opinions on it. You know, it's like, if you're going to say something that's going to make the room uncomfortable, chances are it's going to make the room uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You have to regulate yourself. So that way you don't, do those things. And that's very hard for people with ADHD. It really is. It's really hard sometimes for us to do that. So it's almost like the, you know, if you make a mistake, own it. Like, listen, you know what? I probably shouldn't have said that. I'm really sorry or something like that. You know, it's like, you know, maybe I need to think before I speak or just anything along those lines and, and, mm -hmm. and tell people that you're sorry. So I would probably um, start with there, like, you know, just, you know, you're obviously not with the person on the next time you see him, you know, maybe scram by the arm and say, listen, I'm really sorry about what I said. You know, I was out of line. And I think doing were. that, I think doing that is such an important, uh, right. uh, and you know, and we, th we think about what are the things that really strengthen relationships? It's not that we never piss the other person off or, or hurt them. It's what strengthens them is that we did piss the other person off and hurt them, and we did everything we could to repair it and to make it right. That is, and, and I think when we realize that, it, there's a certain freedom in in sort of because I know I work with a lot of people who are so stressed about constantly like they're so afraid to make a mistake socially, right? And it's like it's not necessarily about not ever making a mistake. It's like well, how do you how do you show that you are concerned and care about the, that person's feelings enough that if you recognize that you've hurt somebody, you're going to do something to make it right. Well, that's, that's the biggest challenge is like, you know, how do you do it? You know, and the other thing I always, I always work with my clients on too is just because you feel a certain way, doesn't mean the person that you've done that to feels the same way. And just because you want to apologize to someone does not mean you have to accept it. And, 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 I, and my, and I taught this to my son, you know, there's a kid at my son's school that was being really mean to him. And he said something to me. And I said, I said, let me ask you a question. My son's name is Asher. I said, Asher, let me ask you a question. I said, do you accept his apology? He goes, no. I thought about it. I said, okay. I said, then tell him that. No, I don't accept your apology because I don't think you mean it. And sometimes people are going to say words that hurt us a little bit. But sometimes you have to hear that, like, you know what, Jonathan, I didn't like when you said about so-and-so, you know, it was really kind of obnoxious of you. And I know I'm not going to forgive you. And I'm like, well, I can't ask that person to change how he or she feels. Mm -hmm. I have to understand that if I feel that I put forth the best effort in that moment, then there's nothing else I can do. And I always say, like, you know, if you leave it on the food, it's your sports analogy time. If you leave it on the field and you feel like you've done everything you can do, then that's where it ends. And again, people aren't always going to forgive you. I think when, when I have felt in the past that somebody is resisting me, I might go at them a little bit harder. Hmm. And sometimes it's like that almost leads to that person resenting you more than respecting you. Here, I'll give you an example. Um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, in my attempts to run for the school, I, I mentioned I'm running for a school. So one of the guys in the school board is a good friend of mine. And I texted him yesterday, like, hey, I'm coming to the meeting, blah, blah, blah. Never heard back from him. And I'm like, that drives me nuts. I'm like, oh, I'm like tensing up because I'm waiting for his text, waiting for his text, waiting for his text. If you ever text me and you don't hear back from me, just 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 text me again because it's not intentional. I promise you. 
Well, but that, you know, but again, that's the, that's the line. So he texted me back this morning. Okay. So just cause it wasn't in my time frame of when I wanted the text doesn't necessarily mean that he wasn't going to respond. So this is, this is again, Eric, this is one of the biggest challenges is we as ADHD people set up this world for us that we really want to work the way we want it to work. And when it doesn't, we're like, Oh my God, they don't like me anymore. They don't want to spend time with me. They think I'm a jerk. They think this, and in reality, it's like, you know, for all I know, this guy was in a huge business meeting, walked in his house at 830 night and says, I'm done with my phone. <laughs> I'll deal with everything tomorrow. So that's, that's part of this. And, and, and so you ask, you know, how would, how would I coach a client on that? It's like, you know what? It's like, you can't change how somebody else reacts. All you can do is fix it from your standpoint and hope that person agrees with you. And I cannot tell you how many times I have not followed my own advice. So this, this really wise piece of advice that you just imparted to, to all the, the listeners, how will you remember that? Well, that's part of the challenge of it is it's like, you know, I find that, you know, just cause I do this doesn't mean I do it person perfectly in my own life. And I, I think it's just constantly reminding, like, you know what? It's like, not everyone's going to like you. Not everyone's going to like what you have to say. Um, you try to minimize the damage. You try to make things as comfortable for people as you can. And those people that get you and understand you and love you and want to be close to you are the ones that you embrace. The people that don't really give, you know, a rat's, you know, what about you, then, then you know, that's life. I, I mean, I, I really, and it took me, let me tell you something, that statement took me so long to get to to understand. I, I mean, for years I was covering up my ADHD and I thought, Oh, I, I, you know, I want, I don't, I want people all to love me and all to think I'm the greatest thing in the world. And now I'm like, Hey, you know what? Like if, if you know, look, I mean, this is our first time, you know, we talked on the phone. This is our first time interacting. If I see you at the Chad conference in a month and you're avoiding me like the plague, I'll be like, well, he obviously didn't like the way our call went. Or if I see you at the Chad conference, like, Hey, come to dinner with us. Let's hang out. I'd be like, wow, I obviously made a real good impression on Eric. And, and, and okay, I'm going to get a little, go back a long time. You know, when I was a kid, I had a real problem keeping and maintaining friendships. Mm -hmm. And now I almost get accused of being friends with too many people. Mm -hmm. So one day my wife asked me, she said, you know, why are you like the mayor of our town? Like, why do you know everybody? Why are you always so nice to everyone? I'm like, you know what? So I remember a time when I was, when people weren't that way to me and I really, don't ever want other people to feel that way that I felt. Mm. It's really kind of a very difficult thing to say, but it's the way it is. So, you know, I'll see you at, at Chad and I'll be like, what's up, Eric? How are you, man? Good to see you, you know, and you'll and be I'll like, probably be like, uh, what, what, what's your name again? Uh, it's, 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 yeah. Okay. Visual hand over the eyes. <laughs> yeah. I can't see you. Sorry. Gotta go. <laughs> so, right. it, so, so Jonathan, if, if that actually, that, that situation does occur at the chat conference where I'm like, wait, who are you? So just so you know, I have some like context blindness with some people where it's like, I could recognize you on my screen, but it go to another like environment. I'm like, I know, I know that person, but where do I know them from? It's like, it's one of my biggest social liabilities. Like it's, it's really frustrating actually. So when you said that you keep, you, you know, everybody, I was like, oh, I want to know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking a lot of work, but yeah, I don't always remember everyone's name, but I like, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I, I want, I want, you know, it's like, I, 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 and I have to tell you, like my kids do this and, and, and I'm going to be proud dad. My God, they, they just, God, people come to me like, God, your kids are just the nicest kids. And they ask how we're doing. I'm like, I, I, I've done my job. I, I mean, it's like that they, they make other people feel so that's good. Awesome. So I want to be with people. So that's, so that's really kind of, um, you, you add, you know, as we're doing the coaching thing. So, I have to really focus on, you know what? Not everyone's going to like me. Not everyone's going to respond to me in the way that I want he or she to respond to me. And look, at the end of the day, like this, this person I had the disagreement with is may think I'm the biggest blank in the world or because of my narcissistic ADHD side where I'm like, oh, he's probably thought about this all week. He forgot about it the minute he stepped out of the house. So it's, it's, it's interesting. This is not the first time you, you use that phrase of uh, narcissistic ADHD. Um, you know, I, I find that most people who really have narcissism, like one of the features of it is they don't recognize that they are narcissistic. So I'm wondering if you're using that, that term in a sort of shaming kind of way. Oh, no, I, I well, okay. I, I actually wrote a couple of pieces on, I've done, I've done some work on this, you know, through my, through my website, uh, okay. through my blog. Um, and, and I, I found that really a lot of people 
will mistake ADHD and narcissism a lot. Sure. No, I, can, I can understand that because they can and, appear self-centered. Right. And so it's like, but I also think that people with ADHD have some narcissistic traits that are def- naturally a part of ADHD. Again, it's like, um, you know, thinking that, you know, that, that I made an impact on you that you're going to remember me all the time. And in reality, it's like, well, you know, not that you wouldn't forget me, but you have. No, not- I totally want to make sure we, we uh, do some expectation management here with Jonathan, because okay. um, I'm so bad at recognizing people in public. I just want to re- reiterate this again. Um, just, you know, so you don't take it personally oh. you're like, when you're like, you know, I'm, I'm talking to some people and you're like, hey, Eric, and I'm like giving you the wave of like, and we all know it when we see it, the, the wave back when you actually have no idea who that person is. Right? Well, that like, happens to me too. <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna happen too with the chat. don't get me wrong oh, and, and i get really overstimulated at conferences so just uh you know bear, bear with me so just come up to me and, and um and just you know just intru- say hey it's john i will and I'll, and I'll and i'll be like thank you so much that's john that's Carroll, right. Right? Well, that's uh, how would you just did, what you did there's a great exercise that i do with clients it's like you know sometimes you have to just recognize how people are like you know like hey it's jonathan you know like hey no, I always got to be like, hey, it's John and Carol when I shake their hand and they'll be like, oh, okay. And I know you get your, your ashes. I'm always so grateful when people do that to me, even people that right. I like, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's really frustrating. I wish everyone just wore really big name tags like <laughs> on, on their foreheads. It would actually make my life right. a lot easier because right. um, then I'm not having to try to look at like their name. And right. the worst is when the name tag is, you know, flipped around. So now that you can't even see right. that, you know, so you already see that you're awkwardly looking like at their chest and it's like, you're not meaning to look right. at their chest because you're trying to see their name tag. Tag, right? right and um and so that is a wrap hold that i'm gonna pull myself out of all right so as a, as a strategy that i want to suggest for you um come up with a list of sort of the the topics of things that you know tend to be the things that you uh maybe have historically wished you can take back in social situations and then when you are going to social events create location-based reminders at that event that that cues you to remind you of the, the sort of the, the mindset that you want to be in the sort of those stories that you told yourself uh, that you, you shared here um, that that you want to really be aware of right before you enter that social situation that's a great idea no that's really helpful that, that, that makes a lot of sense because when I asked you know, when I ask people like how are you going to remember that you know, often people who are in the beginning of the coaching process are like, no, I get it now. I'm going to remember it. And then to my response to them is typically, right. So, so how are you going to remember that? <laughs> right. Cause when we're in the moment of this aha, it's like, we feel it now. So like, of course I'm right. going to remember it, but it's like, right. it's not the way it works people, you know? So, um, okay. Well, the movie analyze this. Let me, let me just give you a really funny example of that. The movie, do you ever see the movie analyze this? It was with uh, Robert. Okay, it was, it was. I'm more of a movie guy. It was with Robert De Niro, and it was with Billy Crystal. Billy Crystal was a therapist, and De Niro was a mobster. Yes, and he yes, comes yes. to the office, and he goes, "De Niro, you know, Crystal's talking for like five minutes. He goes, you 'You're good, you. You're good, you. Oh, you got me. I'm all good now.' He goes, it, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> that's good. That's good. But let's let's bring this this plane in for for a landing. Sure. Um, Jonathan, first of all, thank you so much for for sharing, um, uh, you know, a topic that I think for a lot of people is a, is a very uh, it's one it's an important topic, and I know it's a it can feel very vulnerable uh, to to share this um, with others. But I think the more that we're talking about this, and I I've been talking to more and more adults with ADHD who are really struggling in in the social realm. Um, you know, it's, and it's, I think you and I have a, a, almost an opposite problem. It's like, you know, everyone and I'm like, you know, trying to, you know, figure out where, where do I reach out to people? And it just seems like so much effort. So I'm, I'm still here at the office. Right. So it's, it, the, the dynamics are, are different. Our contexts are different, but I think there's, it's social is a domain that I think we need to have a lot more conversations around in, in the world of adult ADHD. So Jonathan, where can people reach you? So I'll give you a couple of things. Uh, first, of all, first of all, let me thank you, Eric, for, for having me a part of this. This is great. And, you know, I, I compliment you and, you know, other people that put out content for people to help with ADHD. I think our community is a very passionate and, and, and caring community that really wants to help other people understand what we're dealing with. So thank you for the work that you do. I, I think it's awesome. You're welcome. Uh, Thanks for saying that. And, uh, 
you know, I, I have some digital stuff that I put out too. And, and I, I think it do it out of, out of my love and my passion for what I do. So uh, my website is ADHDguru.com. So that's ADHDguru.com. So ADHDguru.com. It's also my Twitter handle. So it's ADHDguru. Uh, you can call me at area code 877-398-2343. Um, you can email me to Jonathan, that's J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N at ADHDEFcoach.com. And last but not least, I would like to promote my YouTube page, which is uh, youtube.com slash ADHD guru. And you can find me on Facebook and all those other things as well. And for all of you whose brains just went like, wait, wait, what, what? I didn't grab a pen. What? Oh, forget it. Don't worry about it. Go to the show notes for this episode. You can even click on the, your podcast player and all of those, uh, the places where you can contact Jonathan will be right there at your fingertips. Your, right. your working memory. Thanks you. Jonathan, thank you so much. And we'll, uh, I'll see you in November in California. Sounds good. All right. Take care. Thank you. So that now ends the the audio recording. Um, and so before I do anything else, I need to check my calendar. So I, uh, cause that's sort of what I do. And all right, so I have just like two minutes, but I do have to let you go here in a sec. Uh, so thank you. Um, I, I hope that you uh, thought this went well. Um, anything you want to tell the, the YouTubers um, since you, uh, since you do, since there, people are watching this probably on YouTube, um, where can they tell, what do you do on your YouTube channel? Well, I do different videos, just like self-help videos on, on different it, it, you know, different things, similar to what you and I are talking about right now. Um, you know, I've done some on like social situations, narcissism, um, things to ask in school, things to look for in coaching, stuff like that. You, you mentioned earlier that, earlier that you use a green screen. Do you use one of those like green body suits where you can like then become yeah, like, a really I mean, awesome superhero <laughs> or like... <laughs> I, I've been playing. My local library has a a green screen that you can like rent. It's uh, they have a whole studio room, which is amazing. Like like it's awesome that my textilers go for that. Um, so I was using that, and it's so cool. Like what you can do with a green screen. It's, it's yeah, it is fantastic. It's, it's great. Um, no, I uh, the the my budget is not that of having. I'm actually looking for. I actually need to. Long story short of it is yeah, we don't have the budget quite for that. So we do the best we can with the resources we have available to us. That's that's right. All right, man, well, I'm going to let you go. Um, we'll definitely be in touch. I'll let you know when this uh, episode comes out. And uh, for everyone else who's been watching to the end and are still watching, the, the one viewer who's still watching at this point, thanks for sticking in there and for, <laughs> for watching. And uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, getting to see the, sort of the video and the uncut sort of aspect of what we do here on ADHD Rewired. All right.